Hello and welcome to another episode of Viewspit. My name is Uliana and today we're going to discuss the topic Do you support the strike? And if so, why? To talk about this topic, I'm joined by two sociologists. Hello Luke. Yeah. Hello Ambrose. Hi Uliana. Um, Luke Mattel, you're a professor of uh, politi for political sociology and Lambros, you are a PhD student and a tutor. Indeed. Right, so let's just go ahead and start with the question we're discussing. Um, how do you feel about the strike? Do you support it or not? Luke, let's start with you. I'm supportive of the strike. I think it's, um, it's obviously a pay strike, which is the main issue uh, which it's about. But uh, for me, and I think for most people who are involved, it's a much broader thing. It's about um, austerity policies, it's about universities being marketised, um, it's about inequalities between higher paid managers and lower paid workers, and it's also about the people who support the students and the experience of, of, of the university for students. So, um, yeah, so I'm quite supportive of it because I think it's really about um, not just the pay issue, which is the the sort of most visible thing, but it's about sort of the future of universities generally in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. How do you react to that, Lamar? Um, well, I think I, I recognise the question a little bit um, differently, I think. So I, I kind of almost approached it as a false dilemma, in, at least in my view. Um, and um, the reason why I, I see it as a dilemma and or, or, or the way in which do I respond to it as a dilemma is, is through another paradox. So I am completely for uh, the strike or for the principles and the ideas and the ideals behind uh, the strike, but um, at the same time, I'm, I'm against it, so I'm sort of against it because I'm for it, because in a nutshell, what I think um, about it is that, although I do agree with the ideas and the principles and the ideals of the strike, I'm not sure we are in a position to sort of uh, argue them in the way we do, um, for, for one simple reason, that I don't think that um, in our everyday uh, professional practice of uh, you know, academia, we actually support uh, those ideals. So I very much fear that we sort of consent to the very, you know, regula regulatory uh, practices that we uh, we would otherwise oppose uh, during a strike. So my sort of concern is to try and um, uh, try and work harder on on that daily practice: how we publish, where we publish, how we teach, um, why we teach, and all of those things. So that everyday practice of of academic work rather than uh, the instances where we would, uh, you know, resist the practices of uh, privatisation and so on. In other, in other words, I find ourselves complicit every day, so it, for me it makes no, 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 you know, no sense to oppose it just one day uh, as a special event, so to speak. So, do you, do you want to say that every student who's student at the University of Sussex, for example, is a complicit of this whole issue the problem? Well I can't, I can't obviously make that statement because you know, it would be unjust and, and sort of generalising on a number of counts but uh, so I suppose we're talking about student protests uh, in, in that respect. Well I, I think either way we, we do vote with our fees and we do vote with our signatures. I mean I do, I do believe there are uh, you know, tangible alternatives um, out there and, and, and I suppose that if we do feel so strongly um, about this issue, then those alternatives can be uh, pursued. So for me, it doesn't really make sense to kind of sign um, an agreement in an institution that we know what it is, um, and and then sort of um, try and, and 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 resist that choice, or to choose a university to go to pay those, agree to pay those uh, fees to an institution that we know what is like, and then sort of retract or kind of resisted. It kind of seems like a resistance against ourselves and our, our, our actual choices. So, so that's what I'm mostly worried about. Um, Luke, could you justify protests after hearing what Lambros said? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, quite, I'm quite interested in what Lambros says and I quite sympathise with a lot of what he says. But it sort of leads me to exactly the opposite conclusion, really, which mm -hmm. is um, I sort of agree that sort of, you look at academics, for example, they're quite, um, well, like, they sort of go along with a lot of the changes that are going on, they keep silent, they just get on with the jobs, um, or they're even quite complicit and they actually implement that sort of stuff, even just ordinary academics on the ground, but, but the managers as well. Um, so I sort of sympathise with Lambros's view that in an everyday life the, there isn't a sort of sense of resistance, 
But actually, in a way, that's exactly why we need this this type of resistance because it's absent elsewhere, absent elsewhere. And I don't agree with what he said about a, a sort of one day thing. I think there's been a series of strikes. Um, it's, it involves different trade unions from the best, from the ones who represent the higher paid workers to the lower paid workers, which is really unusual at a university. It's supported by the students' unions nationally and locally. It's supported by the student protesters as well. So, and it's part of a broader movement, <coughs> I think, questioning outsourcing, questioning privatisation. So it's true there's been a series of individual strikes, but I think you have to see it as part of a bigger movement. And actually, um, I sort of think it is... It's the basis for trying to get people in everyday life to do exactly the sort of resistance that Lambos is, I think, is rightly saying doesn't go on. So mm. I sort of agree with his picture of what's happening, but sort of disagree with the political mm. conclusions it leads him to, really, which is, yeah. Um. Lambos, what do you say? You're nodding? Well, I mean, agree? yeah, I do not, <laughs> because, we, I mean, I think there is a basis for agreement, you know, in, in, in the way in which we think, obviously, about what a university should be and what education should be and all of those things and what academic practice should be. And I suppose where we differ is that I, I still would, would place the emphasis on the everyday uh, sort of, you know, work routine of us. So, for instance, if I was, hypothetically speaking, if I was to um, be pressurized every day to publish and meet sort of standards that are not academic, they're not sociological, they're not educational, and are, they are about maximizing citations or to meet uh, an REF deadline or, you know, all of those things that are inherent factors, obviously, in this, you know, privatizing um, uh, sort of process of, of, of education, knowledge, and, and, and university abroad. I would feel rather bad to sort of submit to those pressures every day and then, okay, perhaps not, uh, you know, once in a while, but when, whenever those strikes happen to sort of uh, oppose that system that I'm, I'm otherwise sort of complicit with, if you see what I mean. So for, for me, it makes no sense for, for one to strive to, say, meet the next REF or research assessment exercise and say, but I am for, uh, you know... Uh, education as a public good and so on, because I believe that this is being devalued in the everyday uh, practice of, 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 you know, uh, of, of, of uh, academics. And I suppose that, that relates very much to the teaching side of things as well, which I, I see fundamentally devalued. I see very little interest in it, almost treated as a side dish, um, very little um, involvement with uh, students as you know fellow workers within that sort of educational institution very little you know commitment to the teaching practice pedagogically knowledge relatedly you know uh, and all such factors I, I see that there is a kind of mismatch there so someone who doesn't say commit themselves to those practices it makes it very difficult for me to understand how they might you know uh, oppose them just on on a couple of days so for me ideally if we could combine the two that is a daily practice of sociology or, uh, you know, education that matches those principles every day plus industrial action and, and protest, then, then that would be perfect. But I think unless that kind of asymmetry is, is uh, you know, bridged, I, I don't see myself, you know, being able to, to, to support it. I mean, from a personal level, I almost see it as a kind of betrayal of, of what I do every day because I invest a lot on all of those things, obviously, that, that, that I'm saying. Uh, you have been mentioning a very interesting um, point, education and teaching. When we talk about protests, that means that students don't get their teaching. Um, how yeah. do you feel about that? How would you justify that in front of students who pay money to be able to learn something and on the day of protest they're not? Like, What would you tell them? Well, I think the thing about the strikes is the most important thing is it's supposed to disrupt the management of the university. So it's not specifically intended to disrupt the students, but obviously it does disrupt the students if they miss their classes. So it's, make, it's, supposed, to, it's supposed to make life difficult for the managers. They have to, there's lots of things they have to reorganise, which people don't realise. They have to work out how much to dock our pay, what health and safety policies to follow when there's a strike and all these sorts of things. And these series of strikes have had in a row been quite disruptive to the management. They've had to have lots of meetings to work out how to respond. So... But it's true that it disrupts the education of students, but I think the key thing is it's... A, it's, it's, it's and here I slightly disagree with Lambos, it's exactly about teaching and, uh, and other research-related things which you mentioned, which I won't go into because you weren't asking about that. 
that is actually about people who are really concerned about the way that teaching is changing to one where the courses we put on, so for instance, I'm only ever asked now to put on courses that will bring in lots of money. I'm no longer asked to do which I, which I used to be asked to do, to put on courses which were educationally useful, which filled gaps in the curriculum, which were useful for society. That's, that's not a question that anybody's asked me for a few years now. So, so it's actually about teaching and it's about resisting a sort of university which denigrates education, which denigrates teaching, which um, pushes students into courses which are about employability, which treats them as consumers rather than citizens. So the, lots of the protests at Sussex have been about the idea that students are, uh, have these things imposed on them and they're not. So when there's occupations and things, no one talks to them about. The managers don't talk to them about what, so about why they're doing it or find a way of negotiating a solution. So, so it's true that it's disruptive about students, and I accept that. And it's something which lots of academics feel very uncomfortable about. You know, the first strike we had on October the 31st, I cancelled a lecture which had 120 students in it. So, you know, I didn't feel great about that. Um, but actually, the other, so, but I think it is for the students. It's for the nature of education. And the other thing to remember is lots of students support the strike. So some uh, associate, other mm -hmm. associate tutors in sociology have been contacting me over the last few days saying they've actually cancelled their classes because the students asked them to. So, uh, and you have to remember the students' union support it, the national union students support it. So I recognise the, the impact on students, but the, it's, it's about students and has a lot of student support as well. Um, I also slightly disagree, just to go back to what Lambos was saying, that um, I agree with him about the everyday life mm. issue. <clears throat> um, but I don't think that clashes with this industrial action. The industrial action is a trigger to make people change their practices in the everyday life. I also think his picture of what goes on in every life is not actually necessarily accurate about universities because with research assessment exercises, which is the ref that he refers to, there's lots of resistance on a daily basis. So there are lots of academics who refuse to go to meetings which are about that. They refuse to fill in forms which are about that as a type of resistance. And I don't agree with uh, Lambos' portrayal of um, a university where people I'm interested in teaching. I think that's mm. there are certainly people like that, but I think I just, I just don't find that true at all. I think. Mm. I mean, my my image is obviously you know completely different. I mean, I I I see most people, um, you know, striving to meet those standards because it's like occupationally necessary, not because they're bad people or because they're not committed to education or the production of sociological knowledge, but because precisely those strictures and those demands form very much, uh, you know, form the basis for, um, uh, you know, one, one's occupational uh, status, you know, in other words, to, to, to keep one's job and so on. I think a, lo a lot of people are pressurised to, to meet those demands and, and in doing so, I th that's what I'm saying essentially, that in doing so, they cause much more harm which cannot be undone by them not, uh, you know, by them joining w one one day of industrial action. So, for me, the idea would be for them not to publish in peer-reviewed journals to resist, uh, in, you know, the, the sociological work being done for uh, uh, citation purposes only or for funding purposes only. And I keep seeing that, and you, you keep seeing that, you know, from the call of papers that you. Uh, that, that you get and, and people respond to that are very rarely about the issues that's being discussed and they're mostly around methods or particularly, uh, you know, measurable perspectives or this and that. I mean, you know, again, part of that sort of regulatory um, regime. I don't know, I, I think my, my, my impression is very strongly that and I, I, I do feel that it is kind of contradictory for, 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 for students as well to... to uh, um, to say, you know, to sort of defend education and university education as a public good when they are being asked to pay the amount of money that they're being asked. Because uh, you can't possibly assume that that institution that charges you that amount of money can never be a public institution. Um, it can't be. Therefore, f from the moment that you sign your agreement to study in that university, um, I'm not sure how it makes sense to sort of uh, oppose that choice later. That that choice has already been done, already been made. Yeah. I mean, all I would say about that is I think uh, I sort of agree with that. I think there's a minority, a significant minority of people who do, do do resist the kind of things you're talking about. But I agree, it's not it's not a majority. But um, I think the thing to do is to bring to bring to, well two things. I'd say one is the the answer to your point is to bring the everyday practice and the industrial action together, mm. not by. Um, uh, being critical of the industrial action because it contradicts everyday practice, but by mm. fighting for people to do both of those things at the same time. 
And the, but the other thing I would say about it is this is a political structural issue. Mm. Um, individual people resisting things in their everyday working practices by itself is important, but it's about political structural change. So what's happening at universities is revolutionary in the whole history of English universities at the moment. And individuals resisting things is not is not by itself going to do it. It needs some, um, you know, I would like political parties to be involved in this, but they're not. So trade unions and student protests are the avenues mm -hmm. where there is structural questions and political questions being raised in the public arena. Well, um, I mean, I don't know. My, my position, say, in relation to that would be that if, if I were to feel... Um, you know, strongly about something like that. You know, there's plenty of uh, trust universities or cooperative universities. There's plenty of universities that uh, uh, you know oppose th that that very you know privatizing regime that we're talking about. So why not sort of choose to enroll there? I think that is a very uh, you know strong point to make, a very uh, clear point to make. Because if there was a rise in 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 support of of, of such institutions, that's a very clear message of, uh, you know, where one positions themselves in relation to education, in relation to knowledge, and in relation to the commitment that one obviously makes for, for, for that type of knowledge. So there's the Social Sciences Centre in, uh, uh, in Lincoln, there's, uh, uh, you know, plenty of cooperative universities like the Mondragon University in, in the Basque country who, who are completely run uh, like that, you know, with, with people being the beneficiary owners of the university, who can claim the university as being their own because they are actually people who, who partly own the university itself. So, for me, th that decision is still kind of important. If one feels so strongly, uh, 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 you know, about this, uh, I think s support needs to, be, needs to go in those kind of uh, areas and completely outside the very system that, that one seems to be opposing. And I, I suppose counter to what Luke is saying as well, I, I, I can't possibly identify you know, the university as, as a, a public institution because I don't think it ever has been. I mean, it has been publicly subsidized uh, in the sense that it's as public as the BBC is, but I don't think it's public in the sense that we have a say on the curriculum or we have a say on its management and all of those things, and obviously Luke will say, well, you know, the, the strikes are, are the way to sort of achieve that. What I'm saying is that why not side, sidestep the complete institution and just emphasize on the things that matter for us? So, education, uh, production of knowledge, anti-privatization, which by joining cooperative institutions would make a very clear uh, and very, you know, sort of positive contribution towards. Well, I agree with that, except all the examples of free cooperative universities, including the free university in Brighton, are run by academics who are doing precisely that. But I agree that more academics could do it. But these are free universities that you just mentioned, of which there are several in Britain, mm. and you mentioned the social sciences link. Yeah. They are run by academics who are doing exactly what you're asking academics to do. I mean, you could, so, yeah, but I mean, more can get involved, that's true. But the, you're, I agree with you that, that public universities were, were never public universities. Mm. Uh, they weren't public. They've never been public sector in the UK. They're like independent charitable organisations, so they're not exactly, profit, yeah. but yeah. they're not. But they are private institutions, effectively. Yeah. Um, I mean, the charity is run by boards of trustees rather than treating, yeah. say, academics and students as beneficiaries. Well, I think the difference like between then and now, Juliana wants to stop us, but the difference between <laughs> then and now <laughs> is that they used to be, until quite recently, oriented around public goals, um, which was education and the social good, and that's what's gone. So they weren't public institutions in terms of ownership, but they were public in terms of their goals. And that's been lost. But nice that we can end on something that is uh, that you kind of agree on. Mm, I think we agree on most of the things. They're really but, yeah. public, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that just shows how important this topic is and how much there still is that we need to talk about and that we need to realize and um, to exchange. For the ending, could you please try, I know it's difficult because you've said a lot, um, summarize your point of view in a few sentences, just maybe short. Um, we started with Luke, so let's start with Lambros. Oh, <laughs> start. Dear. Okay, so the most difficult part goes to me. Yeah. Well, I suppose my argument is, uh, you know, that obviously if, 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 you, if you are a bit like me and sort of defend the principles of... Uh, uh, of obviously education and uh, as a public good university as a, uh, as an institu actually not university as a, as a as an institution that that safeguards that that's not my point at all but if you do 
support education as a public good and knowledge as a public good and all of those things. I think the space is outside university to do that. And I think it might be much better to sort of support such institutions or create those institutions rather than join uh, an essentially already rotten one and demand it to uh, reform itself uh, in, into, into an ideal that it's not, uh, in my view, ever really uh, going to become. Uh, yeah, well, I agree with Lambert about the importance of these free um, universities outside the normal sort of sec university sector. I mean, there's lots of exciting uh, examples of them going on, including uh, including in Brighton itself, um, and people are involved in those in various numbers. But I don't think you can abandon this this sector, which is a massive sector, which is educating 99% of the students um, and employing 99% of the staff. I think you have to like do both. I'm, you know, I support these free cooperative universities, and I'm involved in mm -hmm. the two of them. And um, but I just think you have to participate in within these other structures. And um, Lambos is talking as if the battle is lost, and it may well be lost. But I don't think that's the way to. Uh, I don't think that's the way to tackle it. You know, you have to try and mobilise all forces behind behind both kinds of approaches. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think you've raised really interesting points, and. Um, points where you can, we can think further, hopefully. Um, so if you have any views on what has been said, share it with us on Twitter, hashtag Usebit, or on YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you next time.